Hi guys, this is the Pearls of Color podcast. I'm Sarah. You can find me on Ravelry as Sa Laws. I do have a blog, and it is pearlsofcolor.blogspot.com. This is episode 19. I hope you guys enjoy watching the podcast. Those of you who are returning, thank you. Those of you who are new, um, welcome. I hope you enjoy it. You can catch previous episodes up on YouTube or as well on my blog. On YouTube, I do not put show notes, but you will find them on my blog. If you do watch on YouTube, there should be a link to my blog if you want to check out show notes. And I usually will have links to any shops I mention, as well as patents and who wrote them and stuff like that. So you can always check that out on my blog. Today is... I'm hoping this episode isn't super long. We'll see how it goes. I got quite a bit to show you. I've been sort of busy knitted. <laughs> Actually, since I last saw you, I joined um, the Harry Potter Knit Along for the Oloops group has started, and that's what I've been focusing on. I have been sorted into Hufflepuff this year, which I'm super excited about. I do have a Gryffindor shirt on today. Um, I do have a Hufflepuff one though. I, I, it's in a mountain of clothes right behind the camera right now that I need to clean and sort through once I finish recording. So it's been a lot of fun. I really enjoy this knit along. It's usually the only knit along during the year that I actually finish stuff in. So it's always, it's always fun. It's always exciting. This time of year always reminds me of Harry Potter. So it's just really fun to do and if you guys are have not joined the knit along before I think this is the third year um I highly recommend stopping by their group because it just started so you still have time to do the main challenges you do have to buy a skein of their yarn from their Harry Potter collection which I don't think is a possibility anymore but you can join as a muggle and still participate in the challenges and stuff like that I think they are going to have prizes for the muggle thread too not 100% sure, but come on over, check it out, um, it's always a lot of fun. So that's basically been what, I, um, what I've been doing, and it's really been a motivation to start new things and try to finish new things. The first thing um, I finished was a drop stitched scarf that, it was actually a cowl, that I started last winter. I didn't, I used some... Um, Bernat Sheepish, I think, which is single plied yarn I picked up at Michael's. I used it in a hat I made for my boyfriend, and I just didn't like it. I didn't like the yarn. I didn't, it's a little, it feels a little scratchy on your hands, kind of. Um, I wouldn't say scratchy, it just feels rough. And I didn't really like it. Um, it did. It, it had its purpose in the hat that I used. I only used the yellow. I bought a blue and a yellow. I used the yellow. I didn't use the blue, which I, um, the blue is what I turned into it, the cowl. And I have to say, I love that cowl, and I wish I had it to show you. However, last week, um, I met up with a friend of mine, and it was her birthday. She, oh, she loved it. I was wearing it at the time, so, um, I just gave it to her. Because I can always make another one. It was a really simple pattern. All I did was, um, I did three rows of goddess stitch and then I did a row of drop stitches. And I think it was like 20 inches wide and it, it was gorgeous. The the yarn I used, the um, color is called Peacock and it just was a really nice pop of color. I got so many compliments on it while I was wearing it. Um, I wore it like um, to work and back and forth and stuff like that before I, um, I met up with my friend. So, I'm going to have to make another one because it was just so cozy. I thought it was going to be an issue around my neck and it wasn't at all. I will post a picture um, in my blog notes. Yeah, I'll post a picture of it so you guys can see it because it was just, it really is lovely. I will make another one, actually a co-worker um, I told a coworker I'd make her one too, so I have a couple that I'll be making in the future. And then, let's see, 
Then I finish the mittens. You can't really tell, but they got some sparkle in it. I used Gnome Acres Zombie Kiss in her DK Sparkle. I love these mittens. I just think they're adorable. They fit me so nice. I have really, my hands are small, so like if you hold my phone up to it, my they're only as wide as the phone. So when I cast my mittens on, I actually cast on enough stitches for a child's size mint and then I just I just knit them longer and adjust like the thumb and the fingers for myself. I think I I think these are 30 32 or 34 stitches wide. I wish I made the cuff just a smidge bigger and added or, or maybe just added a couple rows before I added the thumb because um, the cuff does come right at the bottom of my hand. It doesn't. I like it a little lower, but it's not a problem. And I bought another skein. Um, she didn't have it in the DK Jazzy Gnome when I wanted to buy it, but I bought another skein to do a hat. The only problem is this is much more red than it is in my mittens. But I don't think that'll be a problem as a hat. I think that'll be. I think they'll still match and be a nice combo. Um, and then the other, let's see, when was it? Sunday? Sunday night I finished this hat. This is the, um, so the mittens I didn't use really a pattern for. I just, I just went with it. <laughs> for the, the hat this is the, I'll show you how big the brim is. This is the Camo Brule by Alicia Plummer. I made it using some Gnome Acres Pumpkin Spice Latte. DK Weight Yarn. I love this. First off, I love this base. Her, um, her scruffy gnome base is just very cozy. It's soft. It's so nice to work with. Um... And then I just really love this colorway because I, I like the, it's like a tans and beige almost mixed in with the tweed and then you've got your orange, your pop of orange. It always, for I've made, I made mittens and that's, um, I wanted to, I made mittens two years ago with this yarn and I wanted a hat to match this winter. I... I'm very monogamous with my winter wears, so I don't switch them up a lot. But I loved, I really enjoy making mittens. So in order <laughs> for me to be enticed to switch through my mittens, because the last couple of years, the only mittens I've been using is my, are my pumpkin spice latte mittens. And I love them so much that I didn't want them to be replaced by these. I wanted to be able to use them both, but like I said, I'm so monogamous uh, with winter wear. I thought maybe if I made hats to go with each pair of mittens, then I would I would feel um, more compelled to rotate them throughout the season. So I'm thinking maybe um, November when it starts getting cold, um, the pumpkin spice latte will be a good a good one to use. And then come February, January, I've got, um, uh, I should have this set done. And then, I have another hat that's brown, but I don't have mittens to match. But I might make mittens to match. Or maybe just rotate through December. I don't know. But I'm hoping I'll be more monogamous with matching hats. So this is the Combo Relay by Alicia Plummer, and I absolutely enjoyed knitting it. It took me two days to do. Um, I started it Saturday night. I started the, the brim on Saturday night. I got halfway through, which I made my brim longer than the pattern suggests. It suggests a 2.5 brim if you're not going to fold it, and I think a a 4 inch brim if you are going to fold it. 
I did about a five inch brim. Uh, because our winters get cold here and it is DK weight, I was a little nervous. I was also, I liked the material that was made, but I was, wasn't sure if it was going to be as warm as a tighter knit fabric. So I was a little nervous about the DK weight yarn not being as warm as I would need it to be during the winter. So I knit it so that my brim, when folded, will cover most of my ears and keep them warm. It looks really cute on. I'm not going to put it on because my hair's up in a ponytail today. Um, which is too bad because you can't really see the pattern unless it's really stretched. So it's it's just like bubbled cables. I guess I'll... Hold on. Let me see. I'll put it on. If my hair gets messed up, guys, it doesn't look cute because I don't have my hair down, but it looks really cute with my hair down. I don't know if you can... I don't know if you can see that, the pattern, but um, it's super cute. I didn't realize it was cables at first when I bought the pattern. I just looked like it had a, it just looked like a textured hat to me, um, and I don't like cables, but I love knitting on this hat, so I highly recommend it for anybody who's looking for a nice winter hat. I wasn't going to put a pom-pom on it, but my boyfriend com convinced me that I needed one, so I did put the pom-pom on, and I think it... Is a really nice, nice hat. I'm glad I put the pom pom on. Oh, there, there you go. You can kind of see the the pattern there. So there's that hat, and I have mittens to match that. They're put away though. I haven't taken them out yet. And then I wanted to show you guys the progress on my sock yarn blanket because I think I mentioned last time I would show it to you. I got a lot done when I was in Canada. And then I added another several squares. So here it is so far. I think when I last talked to you, uh, when I actually last showed this, I had, I want to say I had um, this much done. I think it came down to here. Actually, it wouldn't have included. I'm thinking I finished this in Canada this one is a Canada one so it came down like this so I think I had 12 squares so I added quite a bit and I'm working my way down the side here I really like how it's coming out it's just an ongoing project. I don't think I've decided whether or not um, what size it's going to be. I'd like it to be a baby blanket, I think. I was thinking that this like a, um, this type of blanket would be a great like heirloom blanket to have for, for any children in my future. I don't know. Um, because you can, if you don't put a border on the blanket, you could always just keep adding to it. So I'm adding mine into it. Like whenever I add, I go into a square. So I was thinking how great it would be to make one baby size. And then as your child grows each year, you add another row of squares on for them. So that as they grow, the blanket grows. So that when they're older, eventually they have this blanket that they can take with them to, um, to college or you know, when they move out, like a nice throw blanket. I don't know. I don't know if it's a realistic idea, but I thought it would be a cute heirloom type gift to have. So this might just be a baby blanket size for any of any kids I might have in the future, and then, you know, might add to it as I go. And then I wanted to show some socks that I cast on for my boyfriend. He, I... I'm having gauge issues with the socks I showed for him last time, the, the Patons Koi, um, the gray ones with the rainbow stripes. 
I waited too long before I cast the second sock on for that. So now my gauge is off and I have like no desire to work on those socks. So I did cast on a second, um, second pair of socks for him. I am doing two at a time with these using, um, pulling one from the middle and one from the, the outer edge. And I do my two at a time on two separate needles. I don't like doing them on one needle. Uh, I just don't. I, I think I stress myself out when I do that. So I just, so I knit a cuff, knit a cuff, knit a leg, knit a leg, knit a heel, knit a heel. And then, um, we'll do the feet alternating whenever on those. And then do the toe. And I find that's been really helpful for me when it comes to the length of the foot and making sure they both match. So, um, this is I Dream a Zombie, Zombie by Amanda from No Makers. This is her house gnome base. I really like this colorway. I originally, I bought it several years ago, I want to say. I bought it maybe four years ago for myself. No, actually, that's not true. I actually bought this one with my boyfriend in mind. I bought a second skein of yarn of at the time which was I forget what colorway that was but um this one I bought with my boyfriend in mind and then when I had shown it to him um one day online for socks because I didn't have I my stat wasn't easy access easily accessible at the time when I showed it to him online he said that he didn't like it and he did not like the sense of color um that was used the scheme of colors and he didn't think that he just didn't like it but when I pulled out some yarn to make mittens I did pull this out because I was thinking about holding it double and I pulled this skein out and I pulled a self striping yarn out for mittens and I couldn't decide which one I wanted and they were later out on the bed and I told my boyfriend I, my, tr my troubles <laughs> and he told me to go with the pink because he wanted this one and he didn't like this striped. So I cast him on some socks with it. The thing is, so look at the poolin. This one has these these like spiral thick horizontal type stripes of poolin. Whereas this one does not. These ones are more vertical pulling, a lot thinner. They're not like bunching. I do like this one better. However, I showed him to my boyfriend because to make sure it wasn't going to be a problem for him. And he doesn't he doesn't care that they don't they don't pull the same way. So these should be interesting to see how they turn out. I'm a little nervous to see how they turn out, but they should be interesting. I. Um, you can't really see. I started the leg doing the whiz bang pattern by Sarah Shu of um, the Innis Knit podcast. And that pattern itself is written toe up. I don't do toe up socks. So I'm doing cuff down. The body of the sock though, I don't, I don't think will be much, any too much difference at all. So the body of the sock and stuff will be the whiz bang. She does have her own toe and her own heel um, in the pattern. However, I know that I know what heel works for my boyfriend. And I am not, he's so picky, I just, I'm not going to try new stuff out with him. So these are going to be the whiz bang pattern, but have the double Double Gusset Heel by Christy Payne. So, I've been working on these. I really enjoy working on these. I've got Novel Stitch Marker and the Night Bus from Harry Potter. I got these part of um, my Harry Potter kit I bought from Oloops. So, I've been working on those. And I just cast on for myself. I've got too many socks going, but it's October. I needed to cast on a sock for myself. So I cast on a sock using um, Witchy Poo by Never Enough Time. 
and I am going to use my Vivid Yarn Cackle. I just got this one, Vivid Yarn, from Vivid Yarn. It's my first gain from her. Um, and it's this really lovely, just speckled Halloween yarn. It's got orange, green, purple, black, um, and it's called Cackle. I really love it. So I thought these would be some really cool socks, but I wanted a contrast in heel, toe, and cuff. So, I looked to see what I have. I didn't really have any solid colors to match. So I went with Witchy Poo because if the colors don't match well, at least then the name does, right? But the purple in here does actually match the purple pretty well and the, the Vivid, um, Vivid Yarns. And so does the, well, the green's not exactly the same, but it, it sort of goes. So I think that will just be really cute. I don't have the full skein of this out to show you. I meant to pull it out before I started recording, but honestly, the room right now is a mess. I need to, I really need to clean, and I just didn't want to have to pull more stuff out before I cleaned. So here's a little bit of it. I, you can't really see the color well, I apologize. I did... I think I showed it on one of my earlier episodes. I'm not sure. I will see if I can find the Etsy picture of it to show you guys. But I had previously took three grams out of the original skein to put into my blanket. But I, was, I really just wanted to test out to see how it looked as ribbon on a sock to go with the cackle. And I love it so much. What I'm going to do, so here's the plan. I am going to knit the contrast heel, cuff, and toe of this pair of socks in the witchy poo with the cackle as the body. And then with whatever leftover, I'll have more than half a skein of leftover of the cackle, I'm sure. Because my socks don't take up a lot. What I'll do is then I will do a pair of socks with witchy poo as the body and cackle as the contrast in heel toe and cuff so they'll be like matching matching socks kind of so that's the plan I really really love how this is knitting up so far I don't have a lot and I'll go until I run out of the three grams here for my cuff and then I'll just stop my leg and then I'll pull out my my full skein and work work from that so those are, these are kind of the main projects, whips I've been working on lately. I did pull out this huge blanket I'm working on for my bed, and it's a queen size throw. I'm almost done with it. I have um, two more stripes to go, which is two more skeins of homespun, lion beard homespun. So... I don't have that to show you. It's actually my iPad that I'm recording on is sitting on top of the project bag because it's so big. It's just, it would be way too hard to show you on, on the podcast. So I've been working on that. I've been working on my sock yarn and I've been walk, working mainly on those socks because I finished the hat. I do need to cast on something for one of the Old Loops Extra Credit Challenges. It has to be related to care of um, Hagrid's, um, it's called Hagrid's Hut and it has to do with the care of magical animals, the class that he teaches. Um, I'm like drawing a blank right now, I'm sorry. So I have to cast something on it. It has to be a creature so a toy maybe, or it can be any pattern that has like a mystical creature in its name. So I could do some fingerless mints for my mom. My mom wants a pair of mints. Or I could do a little creature, but I'm trying to decide what I want to do still. So I'm like in between ideas. I was thinking about doing a wild thing. The teacher, one of the classes I help in, the teacher loves that book. It's kind of like her theme of the classroom. 
So, you know, like when we go to the play yard, when she calls the kids, she, you know, tells the wild things to line up. And when we get to the playground to dismiss the kids, it's let the fun and rumpus begin. Um, and she's got, like, different posters, wild thing posters, um, from where the wild things are hung up in the classroom. So I could knit her one of those. Or I could do like a pair of mitts related to the challenge. Or I could knit, um, knit or crochet up a couple little owls. I'm not sure yet. I'm still deciding. I'm hoping to find out, I'm hoping to have an idea, like something settled on by Tuesday so that I can start it. So we'll see. So that's basically all that I've really been working on. I do want to talk about the Valerie group because we had a sock along that is now over. It ran from August to September and I really enjoyed seeing all of you guys post the socks that you made. I can't believe how many sock entries we had. Um, this is, as far as knit alongs go, this one had the most entries. We had 18 entries um, and it was fantastic. I loved seeing everyone's sock. I, I can't believe how fast some people knit socks. Um, crazy. I just like, so for the knit along you could knit any pair of socks and post them. If you used my mock cable pattern you got to post it twice. And then any, you could knit as many pairs within that time frame and post them. So we had several people enter multiple entries and um, po pocket sees. You posted so many. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I, I, I pulled it up on my, my thing. You posted seven pairs of socks and I am just completely blown away at how fast you can knit a pair of socks. Um, I know I'm pretty fast when it comes to, like, if I, am, if I stick to one pair of socks, I can knit them fairly quickly, but that's nothing compared to you. I, <laughs> I am just, like, I'm blown away. So, it was really fun. I, I really enjoyed seeing all those entries. So I did go ahead and put them into the a random number generator, and I'll show you. I put 2 through 18, and I hit the generate button right before I turned on the radio. <laughs> and the result was number 8. And number 8 is, let's see, oh, it is Maureen of Victorian Studios, your number eight. How exciting! With your gummy bear socks. I don't know if you guys can see the number eight. Okay. So, Maureen used some Felici gummy bear. And she knit some gummy bear socks. Which I thought were really cute. And actually, that was one pair of Felici yarns I did not buy to make socks out of because I did not like how it looked online. And then I saw Maureen making these and um, I thought they looked really cute. And I checked to see if anybody was de-stashing any and there was, there was one woman who was de-stashing. Um, she was looking to trade for some more Felici and one of the ones she was looking to, to trade for was Blackberry Jam. So I looked through my stash to see how many skeins of that I had because I knew I had a, I had quite a bit of that one. I had six skeins, so I contacted her and we set up a trade and I sent my note in the mail yesterday for her and I can't wait to get my gummy bears. I do have to say though, I, I pulled the Blackberry Jam out and I haven't seen it for since I bought it and I really do like that colorway and I was like, do I really want to give two skeins away for gummy bear? But Come on, I'm not going to knit three pairs. Honestly, like, one pair of socks for me can take 50 grams. So, that's like six pairs of socks or some type of baby gifts. I don't need that many of one colorway. So, I did. I was like, yes, send it off. 
So I'll be getting those. Um, so Maureen, I'm super excited that you got a chance to win. I loved everybody's socks and I'm definitely going to do another sock along at some point I think guys. That was a lot of fun. So Maureen, you won this Never Enough Time heel toe set of bubblegum and it's blues and pinks. There's not a lot of pink here, just in the heel toe. I know you're not big on pink. Um, but hopefully you can get some use out of them. I think it's gorgeous. It's like a raspberry pink. It's not a really pinky pink. And then along with that, you get this little cheap stitch marker that I put together. A progress keeper, I should say. So yeah, you won the hair toe set. Bubble, it's uh, the bubble bubblegum colorway, and I will get that out to you. I think that's all. Of, I think that's all I have to show. Um, and I think that's all I have to say. Right now, I don't have any knit alongs going on in the group. There is still the F O, the um. I followed that for the stash down, and I will be pulling a winner for that, I think, fairly soon. Maybe, maybe come November. Um, I wanted to pull one today, actually, for that. However, I don't have a set of, I don't, I was going to, I want to make a set of Progress Keepers to give away. So I don't have, I don't have a set made, and I want to, I think, I don't have a set made yet. So I will, as soon as I make a set, I will post a picture or not. I don't know. I'll just pull, I'll just pull, as soon as I have a, a set made, I will pull a winner. So if you have any FOs and you're stashing down some yarn, uh, post them in that giveaway thread for a chance to win. I'll probably pull it at the end of October. And I will talk to you guys later. I hope you guys are enjoying the month so far. I love October. It's one of my favorites. Me and my boyfriend, we just had our anniversary yesterday. And it's his, it was his birthday as well. And then there's, the, there's a fair around here that comes up in October that I go to. And this weekend I'm going to go see Cinderella at the Boston Opera House. I'm super excited. It's the Roger and Hemenstein Cinderella, which is a favorite of mine. I love... I love that one and it's really nice I bought the the tickets for a birthday gift for my mom and my boyfriend bought me one for my birthday um, we both had July birthdays and that's when the tickets came on sale so um, so we're gonna go together my younger sister is gonna join us and it'll be a lot of fun it'll be a really special special thing to do since Cinderella was always my favorite and she was the one that introduced me to the um, the Roger and Hemstein Cinderella, because that was always one of her favorites. So that it it'll be really nice to go to. So I'm super excited about that. So I love October. I love Halloween. I love. I just love this time of year. I love the smells. I love the colors. So I hope you guys are enjoying it as much as I am. So I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.